Okay, um, as the last video to prepare for the tutorial, um, I'd like to make a land um, raster, a distance from land. And what I mean is distance from mainland, right? So we have, um, I'm going to drag in um, the relief that we have, and we also made a land raster. Um, but the problem with this, of course, is that it includes islands. I'd like to make a distance from mainland raster so that we only have the distance as it comes from um, the shore. So in order to do that, I'm going to actually take my, uh, my main township file. And in my main township file, it's vector. But in the vector attribute table, if you open that up, you'll see that it has uh, this, these Boolean fields that say, is it land, yes or no? Um, is it an island, yes or no? And so what I'd like to do with those two right there is create an expression to select only the land where it's not an island. Um, and to do that first, though, I want to actually select just a subset of these all these towns because we don't need the entire state of Maine. In fact, it might be kind of distracting. Um, and we want to create, in general, at this point in our kind of GIS education, we're just going to only have... Uh, we're going to try to start to line up our extents so that our extents are all similar. Um, we're not going to be able to do it perfectly, but we can try, and that's that's good enough for now. So um, I've got my main township file, and actually all I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle, kind of like I did for the uh, the grid for the AIS count vessels um, shape file. So similarly, uh, I'm going to look and see, okay, if I start up here in the screen, make a box like that, the same extent and it should select yep it should select um, the files that I'm looking for so I'm going to right click this and say save as save only selected features and I'm actually going to call this um, towns uh, study area like that save only selected features we can see that it's UTM zone 19 north that's good uh, we say OK cool now I'm going to remove my main township file because I don't need it anymore and what I'd like to do actually is I, I need to rasterize um, eventually what I need to do is I need to rasterize a land that is not islands file. But first I need to make a shape file that is a is kind of a Boolean, um, just dissolved Boolean, right? I hope you might know what that means by now, of mainland, not mainland. So the first thing I need to do is actually just make a selection of everything that's land but is not an island. So to do that, I go up here and open my attribute table. And let me think about this for a second. Uh, we want it to be yes for land and no for island. Both of those must be true, right? If it was land, yes, or island, yes, then we'd get all of the island ones um, as well as all the land ones. So I'm going to go to select by expression. And under this, I'm going to say, I want it to tell me when land equals unique values, yes and no, yes operators and right island equals no so this should work let's see what happens I'm going to say select hit close and let's look at our selection that looks promising to me so if that makes sense to you that's great if not um, watch me do it again um, experiment you know, try a couple of different Boolean ex um, logical expressions and see what kind of turns up. Um, I'm going to save this and dissolve it. So my next thing to do is I'm going to say save as, save this as land no islands. Save only selected features. Okay. Very good. I'm going to remove this old one. Okay, now we've used once before, we've used um, this conversion tool, Polygonize. We turned a raster data set into a polygon, into a vector. But now we're going to do the other. We're going to go from vector to raster. 
But what you might know at this point is that um, a raster needs a value at every location physically in the image. So in order to make that image, I actually need to tell it um, what value, right? What attribute field is the raster image going to use to write the image um, values as pixels? And right now I'm not sure, so I want to check, right? I'm going to go into this attribute table, and I'd really just like it to be kind of just one, um, you know, one for everything, and then um, eventually zero for everything that is is water. So one for mainland. Right now we've got we don't need all this information actually. All we need is a one and a zero. So I think what I might do is I'm going to actually dissolve the entire file so there are no attributes. It's just one giant polygon. And then I'm going to um, actually add my own value to the attribute table and just call it one for yes, it is land. So I'm going to do that. Let's see what happens. All right. Uh, first thing I'm going to do to make the dissolve easier, I think, is delete all of the columns. So I have to go and turn on my editing mode. Got to delete all the columns like this. Say OK. And feature ID remains because it has to. I say save edits, toggle editing. And now I go up to my dissolve command, which is a vector command, right? Vector geoprocessing dissolve. Lands no islands, I'm going to dissolve everything. So there's only one giant polygon. And I'm going to call this mainland. Okay. Okay, great. So now that you have your mainland file, if you open up the attribute table, you might see that, aha, yep, it already has, it just has one value. And we might be tempted to change this FID to one, but this is a computer generated file. It means feature ID. Um, and we probably shouldn't mess with that. It usually um, is kind of important that that can be generated um, on its own. So we'll make a new field and we're going to create a new field, call it value and it's going to be a whole number integer and I'm just going to call this one and that should be good so now it's got a value of one we can save the edits boom and so that means that when we write our new raster image it should give every place that um, a geography exists the value of one at every single pixel so uh, created a field called value looks good so now we know that if we go to our conversion tool, we say rasterize, we can use our value field. And our output file for the rasterize vectors is going to be, let's call this mainland as well. And it's complaining at us because it says, you haven't told me what you want the size of the image to be in its resolution. Um, so this is tricky. We kind of want it to be the exact same size as our relief um, underscore projected digital elevation model. So the there's one way to do that. You can actually go right into this the properties of this image and it will tell you under the general tab, aha, numbers of columns and numbers of rows. This is the the kind of extent, right? The the width and the height, so to speak. So we could do the same thing, but the extent is a little different. So I think a better way to go about it would be to just I think we should just go measure the grain, meaning the, the actual resolution. So what I want to do is zoom into this image here and see, okay, there's a pixel. How big is that pixel? And that pixel is 70 meters. So I just grabbed the measure tool up here. I hope you saw that. It's 70 meters. And so we could define that in here. Instead of saying how big we want the physical image to be with um, you know columns and rows, we can just say, make a raster with a resolution in map units per pixel. Now I'm almost certain our map units are in meters, but we should double check. So I'm going to go to project, project properties, and then I'm going to go and see, yep, we're in NAD 83 UTM zone 19 north is our project, and it says units are meters, and that is okay. So I'm going to say 70 and 70. And let's just give it a whirl and see how it goes. Okay. Okay. 
So there are two things that I kind of want you to notice about what was just created there. First is that the default symbology, of course, is um, that if there's ever no data, then that is kind of involved with our symbolization as well. The whole thing's black. It's not actually black. We have um, a lot of values hidden in here. We've got ones and zeros like we want. We just have to symbolize it properly. The second thing I want you to see is that um, it defines the extent as the, ma the minimum possible um, kind of numbers of rows and columns. So this little piece down here, I think you can see, has kind of this vertex right here has defined the westernmost extent of our raster. And small point down here has defined the southernmost extent possible, right? And the northernmost extent is probably defined by this little piece right there. And the easternmost extent is way over here. So when you're making rasters um, from vector files, just keep that in mind, that it's going to take the minimum extent possible to cover the entire um, data set. So let's visualize this now. I'm going to go into my properties and I'm going to change this. Yeah, I think red, red to, yeah, that should be fine. I know that the minimum is zero and the max is one. I'm going to classify and say OK. And there it is, land and not land. So the last operation that I want to do is I'm going to create a distance raster. And the distance raster is going to come off of this mainland, which I don't know if you can see, but it does actually intersect kind of properly. Our extent is kind of the, the union, or sorry, the intersection of these two rasters. And um, I'm going to do a proximity raster from the mainland raster. Um, so the way I do that is I go up to my raster tools. I'm going to go to analysis and then to proximity. In proximity, I take my mainland raster. My output is going to, I'm just going to call it proximity. And the value, this is, where do I want to measure kind of the proximity from? And I want one because that's land. I want the one to be um, where it's zero because that is the object. And then the proximity is going to come off of that. So, yeah. Okay, and I hope what you can see is we got this kind of continuous raster now where the pixels are representing geo, geographic units away from the mainland. Um, if I choose, I chose pixel, then the values would represent, represent the number of pixels kind of away. Um, but geo is good because our reference units are in meters, so I can translate this distance unit from meters to any other linear unit. So let's change the symbology on this as well. I'm going to go properties. Kind of wild, eh? Well, we'll talk about it um, in class, but I want you to try to see if you can get a proximity raster, just a raw proximity raster where the proximity is from the coast. So if you can get to here, you're doing good. If not, we're going to do it in class anyway, so no worries. Um, you know, that's what we're looking for, so good luck.